Well, hello. Good morning, everyone. This is, I believe, the 22nd time that I have come into your homes and it will be the penultimate one because next week will be the last one because churches will then be opening. So it's lovely to be here again and I hope you'll find that this service one to reflect on and to think about. So we come to our call to worship, which today comes from Psalm 138, which is the Psalm for today. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart before the gods. I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called you, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. And so we come to our confession. God be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your saving ways be known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself and forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. Amen. And our gospel reading today comes from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Well, part of being human is to ask questions. How many of us have had children who go through that period when they seem to be constantly asking why, who, what, where? It's where they get their sense of the world around them. But today we're looking at the who. In the Gospel reading, Jesus knew that the people had all sorts of ideas about who he was. Some ideas were far wide of the mark and some much closer to the truth. But Jesus wanted his followers to make that discovery for themselves. Discovering something for ourselves means that we remember it far better than when we have simply been told things. But imagine you live in a village close to the Sea of Galilee. Your father is a fisherman and you help him with his work. Over the past year or so, life has changed in the village because of a man who walks around the country with a group of friends. Several are people whom you know, as they too were fishermen. They'd left the village and their jobs to be with this man. Everyone in your village knows about him. One woman was deaf and now she can hear. Your next door neighbour couldn't walk well. And now he can because this man cured both these people. Every so often someone will come running into the village shouting that this man is talking by the sea. And everyone stops what they're doing and rush down to listen to him. You find lots of people there on the beach looking towards this man who is in one of the fishing boats. He doesn't look anything special. He wears ordinary clothes and he's not shouting or waving his arms. But everyone feels good that he's there. 
He has a st strange way of making you feel important. People are kind to each other, making room for each other, helping the older people sit comfortably. He seems to make you all want to behave well. He tells stories and gets you thinking about what life is really all about. Then he climbs out of the boat and starts walking around, praying with people, laying hands on some, listening to the people and comforting them. Some people have brought food and often it turns into a picnic with the man smiling and talking. He's interested in everyone. When he moves on, you wave and go back to the village, but the day seems happier and brighter because the man has been to visit. So who is this man? The disciples were getting to the point of discovering that he wasn't just their friend and teacher, but also the promised Messiah, the Son of God. And it's Simon, one of the fishermen, who Jesus renamed Peter, who comes out with an answer for the first time. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's at last had that eureka moment when he discovered something for himself. He understood. And Jesus talked to Peter, the rock on whom he would build his church. We are his church, not the building. That's there to help us worship Christ. But over the past weeks, we haven't been able to be in church, but we made church through different means. And this today, what we're doing now, is no less church than meeting in a specific building. Our fellowship together is church, our sharing together, praying together. We are worshipping and the rock which the church stands is still stable and strong. I wish I could remember who said the following, but the woman in question was lamenting that she, like the rest of us, hadn't been inside church to worship, but she had, like us, been worshipping online. She was asking herself the question, what is it, worshipping? What is worshipping? Had she been praising God? Then she realised that all the meals she shared with her family was fellowship, and that she remembered Jesus at the Last Supper when she went for a walk, she was able to think about that wonderful creation, God's creation. And even when she had a shower, she remembered her baptism. She wasn't bereft of worship and praise. She wasn't bereft of communion, but she was worshiping God in the ordinary things of life. And she really felt that he was close to her in all of those things and in the act of worship online. Perhaps we too should be the same. She had had her eureka moment when she realised that Christ was with her always, with her in everything she did. Have we had that eureka moment? But back to the reading. This is the first time church is mentioned in the New Testament and it must have been quite a shock to the disciples who had been thinking of a kingdom with a king on a throne rather than to hear that it was planned to be more like a community or society of equal people. It doesn't seem to be just earthly either. Jesus sees it standing firm against all odds, being constantly renewed and revived throughout the centuries. And that's what's happening now, isn't it? This is what we should be looking to now, renewing, moving forward, and looking at what we have been doing rather than perhaps going back to what we had before. The church is being renewed and refreshed. So let's look forward and not backwards. Amen. And so let us affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so our prayers. Fill your church, O Lord, with life and energy, spiritual health and vitality. As we feed on you, may we grow more like you. May we exercise your loving, minister with your tenderness and serve with your humility and cooperate with your vision.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill your world, O Lord, with wonder at creation. Open our eyes to your world in all its forms and let us give thanks for the blessings you have given us. Give us hope as we look to the future of a church of people worshipping together, wherever they are and whoever they are. May your creative power give us strength to build on what we have experienced in the last months so that we can see new opportunities and build on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill at home or in hospital, for those who have had just discovered that they have illnesses that will change their lives. We pray for all who work to heal and comfort and visit the sick and counsel the distressed. And in a moment of silence, let us remember in our hearts those who need our prayers, especially at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the dying and those who love them. We pray though for those who have completed this earthly life and have made the journey through death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill our hearts, Lord, with thankfulness and praise as we recall your faithfulness and live in your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the peace. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And the blessing. May God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love now and always. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today and I hope you have a good week. Until next week. Bye-bye.